All right, welcome back, everybody. You know, we are all feeling the pain of the pandemic financially, and many people have turned to credit cards to make ends meet. Yeah, and a recent survey, in fact, by creditcard.com reveals that 56% of millennials have gone further into debt since March of 2020, and 55% say it's directly related to the pandemic. So our next guest has tips millennials, and in fact, all of us can use to help tackle this debt. Joining us now is the founder of Zero Based Budget, Cindy Zuniga. Good morning to you, Cindy. How you doing? Good morning. Thank you. So, I, I've, you know, a lot of people are paying attention to this kind of segment, right? Hearing the numbers. Yeah. What kind of economic shocks do you see, especially affecting millennial generations overall, because they fall into this trap, too, of signing up for a credit card and they don't realize the interest rates? Right. I think that really why we're seeing so many millennials, unfortunately, incurring uh, credit card debt is for three reasons. One is income loss. So many millennials worked in industries that were greatly affected and have been affected, such as the restaurant industry, the entertainment industry, those that work in production, those that work in the arts, those that work in restaurants. So one, we're seeing a severe income loss. Another thing is that we're seeing mounting debt obligations. Mm. So you don't just have, I mean, sure, there is currently a pause on federal student loans, mm -hmm. uh, but there isn't on private student loans. You still need to pay those. On top of that, there are, or there was already credit card debt lingering, yeah. uh, you know, even before the pandemic. So do you think this generation is going to be worse off than, say, the Gen Xers, maybe the baby boomers? I think that millennials are in a unique position in that, you know, even before the pandemic, there were so many things kind of stacking against us, right? You have stagnant wages, you have massive student loan debt. Uh, you have, you know, really falling behind on being able to attain home ownership. But with that said, I do think there are very much proactive steps that millennials can take to deal with the credit card debt and overall what's occurring right now okay. with, you know, our financial situation. Yeah. Like what would be a proactive step? Right. What's something right away that people can do? Yeah, so I think first thing, you know, if you're dealing with a lot of credit card debt, uh, definitely you want to, this might seem obvious, right? But avoid putting additional purchases on your cards because you can't really get out of the debt if you keep on falling into it. So it seems pretty, you know, it's easier said than done, but, you know, just put those credit cards away. Uh, cut them up if you can, at least for now, right? You're still going to have the accounts active, but at mm. least put them away. That's at the very least what I would suggest as a first step. The second step would be to go ahead and look at your credit card statement and see that the payment that you're making actually covers more than the interest that is accruing. So for example, if your minimum payment is $50, yeah. but the monthly interest is say $70, you are not, not even paying catch up, right? enough to cover the interest. So you'll, you're not tackling the principal, which is why it's increasing, even if you don't put on any additional purchases. Mm -hmm. So those would be my two main tips. What about getting a credit card with a lower interest rate? Is that a good idea? Yeah, it's definitely a good idea if, you know, you can look kind of like a short term option. So a 12 to 18 month type of option are interest rates that offer 0% APR as an introductory offer. So you definitely want to look into those cards. You might want to even look into uh, possibly doing a balance transfer at this mm. moment, especially if you have various cards <coughs> with really high interest rates. Maybe you can go ahead and do a balance transfer. Mm. But remember, you want Wait. to to pay it off yeah. before the expiration of the 0% uh, so, interest rate is over. And a longer term option would be to contact your credit union or your bank, you know, who you bank with and ask them, what are your current credit card offers? My card that has the lowest interest rate is actually with my bank, the bank yeah. that I have my savings and checking account with. So let me ask you this, because a lot of people get into trouble where they sign on, right? Because they're like, oh my gosh, it has such a low interest rate. Then it skyrockets. And then they realize, to your point, they can't make the minimum payment to even meet the principal, let alone the interest rates, right? So if somebody has a little bit of a nest egg in a savings account, would you recommend taking from that, fully paying off the card so you don't get trapped in accruing interest and then just build back your savings? So, you know, to be honest, at this moment, no, I wouldn't. Because I would prioritize your emergency fund over anything at this moment. The truth is that, I think we've all realized that nothing is secure. Yeah. Mm. And so we need to be very mindful of what our emergency fund is looking like. And if 
you know, God forbid something happens with your source of income, you're going to want to be able to fall back on your emergency fund rather than swiping your credit card. Mm, Got it. That's a good point. It's a very good point. I would say to make a plan to get out of that credit card debt, you know, write it down, see mm. if a balance offer is available to you, um, but start by looking at your credit card state. Right. Yeah. All right. Really good stuff. Thanks for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me.